Hello everyone, this is the third strike. And as you can see, it doesn't look like I'm going to be playing Ninja Gaiden 3 this week. I've got a problem with my, an emulator that I'm using, FCU, FCEUX, um, and the audio on it's kind of crackly. So I'm going to look into getting a new NES emulator. But today, um, out of the blue, I started thinking of this game that I played for my friend's TurboGrafx-16 back in the day. Um, a PC Engine to everyone in other territories, and people in the US have no idea what I'm talking about. Most people have never even seen a Turbo Graphics. But today's game is going to be The Legendary Axe. Um, and I'll just dive right in. Um, this game has yeah, pretty much no plot. Your girlfriend, Flair, got her caveman girlfriend self. Uh, Kidnapped by some wizard beast thing. I don't actually know if the guy's got a name or anything. I haven't gone too much into the history of this game. But it's got um, a really interesting timing mechanic that I kind of liked. Um, it wasn't like anything I played up to this point. Um, the bar across the top is actually like the power of your swing. Um, Eventually, I'll get a mask here in a second that will give me a more powerful swing if I time it right. Um, a mask and a swing power up. Down here, it kind of gives you one of every power up, just so you know what they are. Point bonus, swing power up, and health. This kind of teaches you what you're doing here. Um, there was a game for the NES that came out, I don't know if, I think it might have came out after this game, it had a similar mechanic called uh, a Styanax. Um, it was pretty much a blatant ripoff of this game, I think. Um, but even down to little things flying around on the screen that, you know, little bats or moths that are just there to annoy you and get in the way of your, your full powered swings, make you waste them on a bat instead of clobbering some bear or something in the head. Um, this was one of the games that my friend had that I really enjoyed uh, for the Turbo Graphics. So I don't know really what made me think of it today, but this is the game I'm playing. Um, and people in the U.S. If never played it over FX, it actually had built-in turbo controls into every controller that it, um, came with the system. A little switch that uh, allowed you to select the speed of your turbo. Um, so games were created um, with that as a game mechanic. So um, on my controller I've got a button set up to automatically turn on the fastest turbo for this game because that's really what you need. And the little wing thing really helps too, that allows you to just hack full speed, which comes in handy when you're fighting um, giant boulders or the last boss. Um, otherwise, there really isn't a lot that I just sit there and hack at. Um, but I usually leave turbo on the swing because it doesn't hurt. Um, the way I've got the controller config, there's actually a turbo on the jump button too, so I hope I don't bump that because if I do, then you just hop around like a little, little midget jumps everywhere. is useful for absolutely nothing. For people who don't know, um, the TurboGrafx-16 was uh, technically the first console to come out in the US with 16-bit graphics. Um, the system itself actually has an 8-bit CPU, um, but the PPU allows for 256 colors and uh, a little bit higher definition graphics than, say, the Nintendo, which was the dominant system at the time, which could only display 16 colors, so the step up to 256 was just amazing. That put it in, um, well above the Genesis that came out afterwards, which was 64, um, put it in Super Nintendo territory, which could also do 256 colors. Um, there were some RAM limitations on the games, uh, 
because they came in little cards about the size of a credit card. Um, which is why, it, you know, it, it doesn't quite have that Super Nintendo look to it. Um, but for when it came out, the graphics were really good. People never really took a chance on it, though. Um, it wasn't marketed very well. Um, and NEC wasn't a company that people were familiar with for video games. I mean, they just really hadn't made anything um, in the U.S. So, I think with a bit more marketing, um, the TurboGrafx-16 could have done really well. Especially with uh, the Turbo Express, which I always wanted. Um, which was a Game Boy-sized uh, video game console. You could take the card straight out of the console and plug it into um, the Turbo Express and play Bonk or whatever on the go. Uh, it really wasn't replicated until later when Sega did the same thing um, with the Nomad. Um, I, I, I never actually got to play a Turbo Graphic or a Turbo Express, so I don't know. What the, I don't know what the battery life was like, um, as opposed to you know the Nomad, which would suck down six batteries in like you know 30 minutes, which was pretty much useless. Um, I do remember that the Turbo Express had a TV tuner adapter that would plug into the top of it, so you could use it as a portable television. Anyway. I was a gadgety kind of kid, and that really, really appealed to me at the time. The Turbo Graphics also had um, uh, the first CD attachment for a game console. And, well, it was called the Turbo CD. I don't know what it was called in the other countries. Um, but there were some really good games that came out for that. Um, oh, that was just... I should have hacked it. Whoa! That was the TurboGrafx CD was the first console I ever heard that had like pretty extensive human voice. Um, I think we played Bloody Wolf or something like that. That was a Rambo kind of shooter game, and it had little. I think it had like a cartoon intro sequence or something, or but it had little voiceovers. You like talk to the boss before you would fight him, and I remember. There's a part where he, the main character calls this guy Stingy, and I never understood it. Steve, you know, people would like you if you weren't so stingy. I was like, Stingy? What the hell does that mean? It was way later that I realized that whoever had done the voices had just read the script and didn't know how to pronounce the word Stingy. So, which looks kind of like Stingy when you write it out. Anyway, I was... Later, when I figured out what he was really trying to say, I always thought it was like a funny mix-up kind of thing. But, uh, I always remember East Book 1 and 2. Looks like Y's. Um, just a, the letter and apostrophe S. Um, as being, like, a really great game. Awesome music. But I am not ashamed to say that I was jealous of my friend's TurboGrafx-16. I had a few games on it, like uh, Dragon Spirit, which were arcade perfect, and uh, I had a, an NES port of Dragon Spirit that just couldn't compare. Of course, I never let my friend know that I thought his Graphic 16 was better. I, you know, argued that the, the NES just had way more games, which it did, and that some of their games looked better, which they didn't. You never want to have the worst console on the block. One thing about the TurboGrafx-16 that I never really liked, though, was that, um... It only had one controller port out of the box. If you even wanted to play a two-player game, you had to buy this accessory called the TurboTap. Which would allow you to play five people at the same time. 
on games that support it. I don't really know of any that did. Maybe Dungeon Explorer or something like that, um, which was a really cool, like, gauntlet on steroids kind of game. Um, my friend was really good at it. I was horrible. Damn, damn. That little bee kicked my ass on here. That yeah, wasn't too bad. I have died on this level just on those jumps far more times than I'd like to admit over the course of playing this game. If I remember right, this was one of the first games he actually had. Um, this and Keith Courage in the Alpha Zone, which was actually a horrible game. I'm gonna get the hit there and I'm not gonna, I don't wanna fall off the edge. Damn, I wanted to push him off though. This, the system is most known for um, the Bonk's Adventures or Air Zonk or whatever, you know, it came out after it, but Bonk was the biggest game on this system. I remember when my friend got it, he was so blown away. And it was a really good game, but the first time I ever played it, I beat the entire game without continuing and just had a ton of lives left. Um, I, and I think I kind of ruined the game for him because he had just gotten it and played it maybe two or three times before I came over, and then I just annihilated the game. Um, yeah, thinking back on it, that was kind of a dick move, you know. But I was excited as he was, you know. It's, it's not my fault, I was just good at the game. Oh, I'm in a bad spot here. I might take some damage just to get away from these guys. I remember this game just being ridiculously hard, um, especially compared to like Nintendo games at the time. A lot of them weren't nearly this difficult. And it's got some floaty mechanics for the jumping. Uh, enemies that kind of have some cheap shots, but it, it was a celebratory day. The day that um, I didn't actually beat this for a long time, um, but my buddy and his friend did. I remember taking pictures of them uh, next to the TV at the end of sc ending screen, like you know, like no one had ever beat this game before. Um, wow, I didn't think they were ever gonna go away. Uh, I'm always so tempted to just stand up and beat on these guys forever, but it really doesn't do much. are not a group anymore, which means I'm going to have to just stand up and take the hit. Oh wait, didn't expect that. Ah, I was hoping I'd kill one. Not a very imaginative boss here. Um, this game does one thing that was kind of unheard of um, back in the NES days is that every, pretty much every boss you fight comes back in later levels as just a normal boss, or normal character that you have to fight, um, which is a little bit, well, it freaks you out at first. like, oh my god, that thing almost killed me last time, and now here's like one every four steps. But you get over it. Especially when you get that fourth mask, you pretty much annihilate anything in at least two hits. Ugh, I hate these. I guess these guys aren't bad. 
Fighter, there's guys that look kind of like these, those guys, but they have shields and, like, spears, and they're just evil. Oh, I'm actually, I haven't died yet. Which is really good for me, usually I at least fall off that dam once. I'm gonna jinx it, I'm gonna end up doing, having some stupid little jumpy death. Bye. If I can avoid fighting an enemy, I will. That's not true. Most of the time I fight everything head on, so it's just my play style. I'm very impatient. It's usually how I end up dying how I end up dying in most of the games I play. I'm just don't like waiting. I die a lot in this game, or remember dying a lot in this game, jumping from vine to vine just because I never wanted to wait for the right timing. And it's counterintuitive what the right timing is, because you usually think, well, I should jump when the vines are closest to each other, but that's just a recipe for death in this game. Those guys really don't take too many hits to kill, it's just when they throw, you know, nine of them or so at you, it gets a little brutal. There's a lot of pallet rotation in this game too, it looks like. like. The water is all just a pallet rotation. Just an observation. Turbo Graphics had a lot of really quirky games too. Um, I remember this one called Bravo Man, which was weird. I guess he's like a Japanese superhero or something. Something that would never even be brought to the U.S. anymore. Um, but he had, like, extendable arms and neck, and he would just, like, you'd duck down and shoot your head at him like a like the, at the bad guys like a giraffe. It was just bizarre. There was this little guy who, uh, at the end of the level, would bring you sushi to give you health, and you could beat him up, and if you beat him up, he would never come back and give you sushi again. Quirky games. Gosh, there was a game that I really liked back in the day um, that he had. It's not like a wizard, or you could be like different classes. I think you could play it two players simultaneous too. What was the name of it? Kadash. I think that's what it was. Really cool game. You can fall down in these holes, and like, I guess maybe they want to show you how much power you've actually gained. Because with your f this this guy took so many hits in the first level, but with a powered up axe, you can just annihilate him with one hit. Let's see if I can try to avoid falling in the last pit. Those monkeys down there. This one's easy because you can, you can tell where they are. Um, on the last one, I know I'm gonna fall in it. I can't remember. I remember it not being the same as the rest, but I don't remember what it was like though. I just remember always falling in the pit with the monkeys. Oh, I think that was it. No monkey pit for me! The spider's worth dropping in because at least she gives you items and stuff. I love the spectacular way enemies die in this game. There's just like, not just fall over or burst into flames, they just, just rumble explosion forever. 
Oh shit, I hate these guys. And there's two of them. This will be my first death. Maybe not. Usually, I remember throwing their spears a lot more. Woof! Oh shit. If I can get it down to one, it won't be so bad. There we go. Definitely not a no death run. I didn't expect it to be. I haven't played this game in forever. And I don't remember. I, mean, I, I didn't have a no death run on this game as a kid or even a no continue run. I don't remember being good enough at this game to even close to anything like that. Now I hope I can get some wings so I can increase my chopping speed. That is really key later on. And it doesn't just affect, like, how fast you can... Hey, free life. How fast you can chop, like, over and over again, like, hacking at something. It affects how fast a single chop moves. So, you can throw your timing off a ton when every time you jump and cut, it's a little bit slower than you expect. That's interesting. I wonder why that was a one-up. Ah, monkeys! Monkeys, no! So distracted by getting a one-up out of nowhere that I, um, completely spaced out on it. Even after getting- and now I don't have enough life. This is gonna suck. If I can get at least one power swing on these guys, I might be able to live through it. It takes a little while to charge, but... Jeez, this is just horrible. Ah. Those guys suck. I really need to not fall in that monkey pit. Might have been able to make it with full health. It's not even like, I mean, you can get past the first monkey pit by not jumping fully so you can see him, but that just serves as like a... Ooh, that might be good. There, I should be able to see the opening this time. Usually you jump too high and then... And then by the time you, yeah, see like now I've got it to where I can't see the, the holes in the monkey pit anymore. If I remember right, it's the second one. Oh no! That wasn't too bad as long as that. I can get some health out of this one. Those monkeys can really screw you up. Uh, I'll be at full health for the spearman fight. My friend always used to call them Punjabis, but I don't think that's right, and I don't know what that is, and knowing my luck it's offensive to someone, so I'm not gonna say it. They're just spear guys. Alright, let's try this again. Let's just see if I can get past him to get over here. And that powered up shot is so much stronger than 
even like a three quarters powered up shot that oh, just wasted it. Oh man, watch this just eat up all my lives. This is getting ridiculous. No one wants to watch me die over and over. Stop dying. <laughs> Poor armadillos, they didn't ask for that. And then you fight those spear guys later, and they are nowhere near as hard. I mean, maybe because they usually come one at a time, but it is a significant difference. No monkeys this time. Ugh. Why am I taking that hit? Or that one? What the hell? Ah, oh, I don't have my wings. That's why. Oh, almost full health. I'm gonna fall in this pit again. And I'm gonna die, because these monkeys are gonna kill me. Oh my god, I cannot believe I died to the damn monkeys. I just can't remember where that hole is. <sighs> I apologize, guys, because now I'm really hurting. I can barely move that axe. Oh no, and it's probably gonna disappear by the time I can get back up to it. I don't actually know if this game does that, but... Knowing my luck, it does, and I just missed even getting close to a normal speed swing. Oh, please let it be up there. I'd be up to full speed again if it's still up there. And it's not. Of course not. It's still not full speed. Damn it. everything off. Oh, whew. That'll help. So I think I'm gonna rush the guy. straight ahead instead of trying to hit the guy behind me. Oh, yes. Alright, I'll have this guy for sure. Well, not if I do that. <laughs> there. How can I have just done that the first time? For the third time. <laughs> now, if I remember right, just like... Well, jeez, just like all the old school really hard games or whatever. Um, like Revenge of Shinobi or Shinobi 3. This level... Well, maybe it's not this level. I thought I remember in this game having... Um, 
um, a level with like multiple doorways and you could take the wrong path and send yourself back to a really hard room. Um, I'm almost positive that there's one like that in here somewhere. Maybe it's the next level. I just remember it sucking. There's a little panic slashing for you. The last thing I wanted was to get knocked off the ledge. And it felt like I was gonna get bounced right off it. That's how the two guys are supposed to be done. Well, not that. Oh shit! Ah, I knew it! <laughs> now I gotta fight this guy without the benefit. See, these guys aren't too bad as long as you've got a fully powered up axe, but if you don't, you really gotta keep them far away, otherwise they will just rush you and pound you. I might take four of these. Oh, I didn't get far enough away. Nope, not four. <laughs> There's five, six of them? Nope. Yeah, so... So a fully charged mask is four times as powerful as the three-quarter, which I don't know who did the math on that one, but that's just insane. Mask, please? What the hell just happened? It almost always gives you a mask after you've lost it. Instead, it gave me three healths. Obviously, I needed health right now. Well, let's not be stupid here again. Take that, but where's my mask? <laughs> Punishing me now. I don't remember what comes here. Oh, those guys. Those guys are actually pretty weak, they're just fast. You don't get when you're walking left, you don't get much room to to see him coming. There we go. That was just wrong. Make me wait like that. Oh. Gorillas. I should probably just let it charge up, but I'm impatient. I think this will die with two hits too. Overkill! <laughs> That's what he deserved, though. Will they die with two hits? I don't know. Oh! Leave it to me in a mist. Now we may never know, because I am not patient enough to wait again. Only the spearmen get that kind of uh, patience from me. being so mad because depending on what they do you can waste a perfectly good spear or a uh, powered up shot on the spear that they throw and then you end up getting hit by it okay I'm gonna wait to see if two shots will take care of the gorilla yep two shots take care of the gorilla
Oh no! There was a thing, a uh, hidden statue up there or something, and I hacked it with my super slash. <laughs> I'm gonna think that that placement was intentional, just to like totally screw you up. Oh, this is it! This is it! This place sucks! Up there at the top it says, uh, five, zone 5A, and if I remember right, like, you gotta get through to, like, Q or something weird to get to the boss. Very Castlevania-like. Oh no. Oh, that'll work. Yay! Didn't get my ass kicked by the bears. Oh yeah, I think you got, you're supposed to. You have to go really slow because they they try to just overwhelm you with enemies in here. If I'm remembering correctly. As I enter the room, that has absolutely nothing in it. Totally overwhelmed with enemies. Although, I don't remember what the boss of this level is. I don't think it's the last boss. Maybe it's the last boss. The last boss might be at the end of this level. Yeah, so now you also get to, like, make that choice in a lot of these rooms, whether or not you go down or you stay up. This one didn't have a door at the upper route, but a lot of them do. I don't know why the guy disappears in the simulator um, before the door opens. I'm using Magic Engine, which is the only emulator I've ever actually purchased. At the time, there were not a lot of good PC Engine emulators out there. Um, I bought this like years and years and years ago. But, I never really regretted the purchase. Up until recently, the updates were pretty... pretty frequent. And the quality of the emulation is really good. Like I said, comparatively. Let's see if I can remember this. I remember playing this so many times. Okay, I think I'm on the right track. The rooms are blue. Maybe the rooms are supposed to be red where I need to go. I don't remember drawing on some deep stuff here, playing on instinct. Yeah, I didn't expect to beat this game. Um, I don't remember being that good at it, unlike Shinobi 3 and Shadow Dancer, so... I'm just kind of getting, just trying to see if I, how far I can get. I was just going to play until I had to continue, but I haven't had to continue, so... And I remember often running out of continues while playing this game, so... Maybe I'm just a better gamer than I was back then. <laughs> yeah, right. You suck. Um... No, I'm gonna go straight. Suck that Aqualung. That's what they're called, but it's not like a Jethro Tull song. Anyway. Oh, this actually reminds me of, um, there's a game that came out for the arcade and for the TurboGrafx. Um, a lot of Hudson Soft games, I think maybe... Uh, anyway. Um, it's called Splatterhouse. A lot of people probably played, are more familiar with, um, Splatterhouse 3 for the Sega Genesis than they would be for the Splatterhouse that came for this, but... Um, 
very bloody game. Horror based. Not the kind of stuff you would generally see on like Nintendo at the time, so. Oh. I don't think enemies respawn in here. See, that's what I mean. Like I said before, they just really try to overload you with enemies um, on the screen at the same time. Thunderstrike on those guys just pains me because they're really not that big a deal. Those women don't deserve it either, but they're such a pain in the ass that they kind of do. doing so well on health right now. Ooh, took a chance with that one. I'm doing great on health actually. Haha. -ha one instance where it's probably good to just blast those guys. Why do I keep thinking that those guys needed to be just hammered on? Um... I don't remember. I'm gonna go down. That's probably wrong. Level T. Q is the one. Oh yeah, I do remember this. And T is not too bad. Oh, judge that one wrong. far. Oh, uh, what? Really? All right. Five, wow. Um... Straight. I feel like I've gone down too many times. V. Uh. I don't know if this is where I'm supposed to be or not. I'm completely lost. I could have swore it was Q though. I'm lost. No ladder for this one. That's gonna 
sock. Try and pick these guys off one by one. Oof. Thought for sure he was gonna chase me. I have no idea where I'm at. All I know is that I need some health. Oh. I'm getting pummeled here, though. Go back to where you were. So I don't have a ton more to say. I'm not doing too good on running commentary this time, but... P? I guess I'm getting close to Q. Getting close to well, I was gonna say I was getting close to death too. I'm still pretty close to death. I'm gonna go down. Did good for my health, I don't know if it's right move. Oh Q. Uh yeah, I'm betting this is the right way. That spear deserved to die. <laughs> Those guys really die with some flair, I swear. Alright. Take that! some health up here. Like, as long as I don't miss one of these shots and take it. Whew! Spear, man! Continue with the downward motion here. No idea. Well, the music's still... I'm super bad guy music, so... I feel like I should be able to jump on those platforms, but I'm guessing not. Oh no, I missed! I died. Oh no! those health. I really shouldn't have picked that health up. I'm gonna die again. This could be my downfall, folks. I really need to get a, full, a few powerful shots off on this guy. And not waste those health power-ups. Stay over there, we'll be friends. Well, we won't be friends, but we'll be fatal foes. Oh, I think I hit his fireball.
Yeah! Oh no, there was the wing I wanted! Here I was being worried that it was going to be health, and I'm chopping really slow. Um, this is the last boss. I need some wing right here in a bad way. I'm still not chopping fast enough. This is going to be bad. I got three guys to get this right. Very cool way to do a boss, too. Oh, I should have just hacked him. I will never get enough wings to make a difference here. Um, now give me a mask. Oh, shit. I have the speed I need, but I don't have my full powered shots. Now, as you saw, they're four times stronger, so I really do need them. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold him in place all night. Maybe hacking as fast is more important. No continue run. Unintentional no continue run. But I guess hacking fast for the boss is more important than having fully powered up shots, but I don't remember it being that way. <laughs> guess I lucked out with the two wings. So that's it. That's Legendary Axe. Um, that's one of my favorite uh, TurboGrafx-16 games. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you ever get a chance, really kind of browse through the TurboGrafx-16 library because there are some hidden gems out there. I mean, especially for people in the U.S. I know you've never played a TurboGrafx-16 or PC Engine or anything. There's like System 2 cards and upgrades and CDs. and I mean, it's really worth checking out, if, especially if you can find some uh, CD images out there. Stuff like uh, Sapphire and Valis and are just great games. I remember Valis 3 being a really good game too. Um, but yeah. So. Boy, that last, uh, I was kind of lost in that. Um, in those rooms. I, I'm surprised I made it through without getting sent back to the beginning at least once or twice. I remember there being a faster way, but I can't remember how to do it, so... And me. Alright guys, until next week, I will see you later.